Did you know that some AirPods use 100% recycled gold and rare earth magnets in their parts? I bet you didn't. And if you're wondering how these magical music tools are made from scratch, then stick around for a step-by-step -step breakdown. Step 1. Design and prototyping. Before a single AirPod hits a factory line, Apple's design team spends months imagining what you'll eventually pop into your ears. Engineers and industrial designers sit down to sketch every curve and contour, not just for style, but for how their earbuds will fit and feel after hours of use. They map out the exact spot for each tiny part, including the custom chip that handles Bluetooth and noise cancellation, the miniature speaker driver that pumps out crisp audio, the feather light battery cell, and the sensors that detect when you remove an earbud. Apple builds countless prototypes using 3D printers and test rigs, experimenting with shapes that balance sound quality, comfort, and battery life. Some prototypes focus only on acoustics, others on weight or durability. These get tested in sound chambers, sweat rooms, and even with employees who volunteer to wear them for long days. Feedback leads to small tweaks like shifting the microphone by a millimeter or altering vent sizes to relieve ear pressure. It's an endless loop of trial and error until the team hits that perfect mix of high-end audio, ergonomic fit, and signature Apple style. Only then does the final blueprint move forward for mass production. Step two, component sourcing. With the design locked in, the next challenge is gathering every microscopic piece that makes an AirPod work. Apple's supply chain is a global operation, and each component needs to meet strict standards for performance, safety, and environmental responsibility. Inside each earbud are custom chips for wireless connectivity and signal processing, ultra-tiny microphones for calls and noise cancellation, and precision speaker drivers for clear sound. There are also motion sensors that detect taps and gestures, plus battery cells no bigger than a fingernail. Even the plastic and metal shells require specific blends to keep them lightweight yet durable. Apple works with carefully chosen suppliers who can consistently deliver parts within tight tolerances while following strict environmental guidelines, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, Apple has supply teams who coordinate shipments so that every batch of chips, magnets, and batteries arrives exactly when needed, avoiding delays that could halt production. Each supplier must pass Apple's audits for labor practices and sustainability, ensuring that the high-tech guts of your AirPods come from responsible sources before they're even assembled. This brings us to the next step. Step three, environmental and material compliance. Meeting environmental and regulatory standards is important in modern electronics manufacturing, and such is the case with every step of AirPods production. Compliance begins with raw material sourcing, where procurement teams require audited documentation for metals, plastics, and rare earth elements. Recycled and reclaimed materials are prioritized to reduce the impact of mining. For instance, reclaimed gold can be used for PCB plating, and recycled rare earths may be used in magnets. Suppliers must also declare the absence or acceptable limits of restricted substances to meet regulations such as ROHS, REACH, and other local chemical controls. These declarations are verified through lab testing and material safety data sheets. Apple and similar manufacturers typically require conflict minerals reporting so tin, tungsten, tantalum, and gold are traced to responsible sources, avoiding finance of conflict regions. Factories operate under environmental controls and audit regimes. Many facilities pursue ISO 14001 certification for environmental management systems and run continuous monitoring of emissions, effluent, and waste. Energy usage is monitored and many sites invest in renewable energy or purchase green power to lower carbon footprints. Water use and recycling are also tracked and hazardous waste streams are controlled and treated rather than dumped. Even the packaging teams aren't left out as they reduce materials and remove unnecessary plastics, relying on recyclable fibers and minimalistic design that still protects delicate units in transit. Take back, recycling, and refurbishment programs also exist to extend product life cycles and recover valuable materials. There are also audits, supplier scorecards, and on-site inspections to enforce labor and environmental standards, while third-party certifications and public reporting provide transparency. So, as you can see, compliance is not a single checklist, but an ongoing program that balances performance, cost, and responsibility across the entire product lifecycle. Teams designed for disassembly to ease repair and recycling. While lifecycle assessments drive supplier changes toward greener chemistries and reduced emissions globally over future product generations. So, the AirPods have been designed, the materials have been sourced, and all environment compliances have been met. It's time to move on to the building phase. Step four, PCB manufacturing. At the heart of every AirPod sits the printed circuit board, or PCB. This is a layered slice of engineering that routes electricity like a miniature highway system. It starts with sheets of fiberglass or other insulating material coated in copper. Technicians use chemical etching to carve out microscopic copper traces that will carry signals from chip to sensor to battery. 
Multiple layers of about four or more are stacked and pressed together, each carefully aligned so that the traces match up perfectly. Tiny holes, called vias, are then drilled by computer-guided machines to connect these layers, allowing signals to travel vertically as well as across the board. After the pattern is complete, a solder mask is applied to protect the copper and prevent accidental shorts, and certain pads are plated with gold or other metals to create strong, reliable attachment points for components. Now, AirPods are very small, so the boards must be incredibly precise, as any flaw could mean poor sound or a dead earbud. Automated optical inspections scan for imperfections, and electrical tests confirm that every pathway conducts exactly as designed. Only flawless PCBS move on to the next stage. If not, then it's back to the drawing board. 5. Plastic slash shell slash enclosure molding. While the circuit boards take shape, another team focuses on the iconic white shells. And these aren't just pretty covers. They're protective enclosures that need to feel smooth in your hand and survive daily wear. The process starts with creating steel molds that capture every curve of the AirPod and charging case. High-grade plastic pellets, often blended with special additives for strength and color consistency, are heated until molten and then injected into the molds under high pressure. For certain parts, Apple may use lightweight metal alloys to add durability where needed. Once cooled, each piece pops out with a near-perfect shape. Workers and machines then trim any extra material and polish the surfaces to a flawless shine. After that, Apple applies a final coating or paint to give that signature gloss and resist scratches. The shells must also meet tight tolerances so the lid of the charging case opens smoothly, the earbuds fit snugly, and the seams stay nearly invisible. Engineers then test them for moisture resistance, drop impacts, and even pocket lint intrusion. The goal is a finish that feels premium and protects the delicate electronics inside, all while maintaining that instantly recognizable Apple look. Step six, assembly of internal electronics. With every component ready, it's time to fit them all together in a space barely larger than a grape. Assembly starts by placing the tiny chips, microphones, and sensors onto the printed circuit board using high-speed pick-and-place machines. These machines can position parts with hair-thin accuracy in a fraction of a second. A thin layer of solder paste holds each component in place, and the entire board passes through a reflow oven where controlled heat melts the solder and creates secure electrical bonds. Any through-hole components, like certain connectors or wires, are hand-soldered or machine-inserted afterward. Next comes the miniature speaker driver and the equally tiny battery, carefully connected so that power and audio signals flow perfectly. Quality control in this phase is intense. Automated scanners check alignment and technicians run audio tests to confirm that sound is clear and balanced. Once everything is verified, the board and components slide into the molded shell. Then adhesives and precision fasteners are applied to lock it all in place without adding bulk. And before moving to the next stage, a final round of inspections, including water resistance checks and drop tests are done to ensure each AirPod can handle everyday use. Step seven, integration into the housing. This is the part where all the tiny electronics finally get tucked into the AirPod's outer shell. Think of it like sliding a brain into a helmet. After the circuit board passes its early tests, workers carefully slide it into the molded casing so nothing bends or breaks. The little speaker has to sit in the exact spot that lines up with the ear opening, so the sound comes out crisp. The battery also gets its own snug pocket, sometimes with soft foam around it so it doesn't jiggle. Then, the super small microphones and motion sensors are set right behind a fine mesh that keeps out dust but still lets sound and air move freely. As for the wires, they snake through built-in channels so they don't get pinched. Tiny screws, snap-in clips, or strong glue lock everything down tight. Some parts are sealed with special ultrasonic welding or light-cured glue so sweat or rain can't sneak in. Engineers also add little shields to keep wireless signals clean and vents to keep bass sounding good. Thin pads of metal help pull heat away from the chips when you crank the volume. But before anything moves on, automated cameras and microscopes double-check every seam and opening. Then workers handle each piece in a super clean space so static electricity or dust doesn't ruin it. Finally, the almost finished AirPod gets a quick shake and hinge test to be sure nothing rattles or feels loose. Only the ones that pass every single check get the green light for the next stage of production. Step eight, quality control and testing. This is the part where Apple makes sure every single AirPod actually works the way it's supposed to before it leaves the factory. Think of it like a big final exam for each pair. First, machines and real people check the sound. They play special tones and noises through the tiny speakers to be sure the music is clear, balanced, and free of weird buzzing. The microphones get the same treatment, tested in rooms filled with fake traffic and crowd sounds to confirm noise cancelling and voice clarity. Next, they push the Bluetooth connection to its limits. 
They pair the AirPods with different phones and laptops, move them far apart and add interference to see if the signal ever cuts out or lags. This is very important for calls, videos and gaming. Batteries get their own workout too. They're charged and drained many times to make sure they hold power safely and can handle fast charging without overheating. Then it's time for toughness tests. Machines open and close the case thousands of times and drop the earbuds to see if anything breaks. Special chambers blast them with heat, cold, and humidity to check that seals and materials don't fail. Finally, inspectors use bright lights and cameras to look for scratches or tiny flaws. Every pair is logged by its serial number so Apple can track any problems back to the right batch. If something doesn't pass a test, it's either fixed, tested again, or recycled. Only the flawless ones move on to the next step. Step 9. Final assembly and packaging. In this phase, the finished internal assemblies are completed and prepared for customers. Technicians place the left and right earbuds into their designated slots in the charging case where mechanical and electrical contacts meet to enable charging and data exchange. Units often receive a final software load or firmware revision, and an automated station will pair the two earbuds electronically so they appear as a single accessory to a host device. Both earbuds and the case are charged to a defined level, so buyers can use them right out of the box. And after electronic checks, a final cosmetic inspection removes any dust or fingerprints. Workers may use compressed air or gentle wipes for this purpose. The product is then placed in a custom-formed insert that holds each component snugly, followed by documentation, warranty cards, and charging cables as applicable. Anti-tamper seals and serialized labels are applied so the supply chain can verify authenticity. Then automated machines fold and seal boxes, while vision systems confirm label placement and box integrity. Now, it's time for Apple's packaging designers to balance protection, aesthetics, and sustainability by using minimal materials, recyclable fibers, and compact box sizes that reduce shipment volume. Protective testing then replicates transit conditions, including vibration, stacking loads, and drop impacts to ensure the box holds up in similar real-life situations. Once packed, boxes are staged by region and batch in the distribution center with scanning of serial numbers into inventory systems for traceable fulfillment. Just so you know, the attention to detail in final assembly and packaging helps preserve product quality and delivers the expected premium customer experience from the moment the seal is broken. Step 10. Shipping and global manufacturing footprint. Once the AirPods are boxed up, it's time to get them moving. First, workers stack the boxes on big wooden pallets, slap on labels, and load them into shipping containers. If a new product is launching and speed is critical, Apple puts them on planes. But if it's just regular restocking, they usually go by boat because that's cheaper, even if it takes longer. Paperwork for customs is handled so each shipment can clear borders without trouble. And Apple picks the best route depending on things like trade deals or import taxes. Now, it is worth mentioning that Apple doesn't build everything in one place. Parts of the job, like making the plastic shells, might happen in India, while the final assembly could be in China or Vietnam. Spreading the work around keeps things flexible and avoids big delays if one country has problems. When the shipments land in different regions, giant warehouses break down those pallets and check the products again. From there, they send the AirPods to Apple stores, online customers, or other retailers. High-tech tracking systems log every serial number, so if a unit ever needs a recall or repair, Apple knows exactly where it came from. Teams keep an eye on sales patterns so they can ship extra stock when holidays or new launches create a rush. Delivery partners handle the last mile, whether that's a courier dropping a package at your door or a truck stocking a local store. Apple also plans for returns and recycling, making sure old or broken AirPods can be collected and reused. It's a giant worldwide operation, but careful planning, real-time tracking, and even eco-friendly steps like combined shipments and carbon offsets help everything arrive on time and in perfect shape. So now that you know how Apple AirPods are made, Share this video so your pals can learn too. And if you want to find out how other world-class products are made from scratch, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one.